Well, staying with the water issues this time around at the other end of the continent. Let's go to South Africa's city of Cape Town. It is on the verge of running dry by April. It is the city's worst drought in a century and has left dams dangerously low. Of particular concern is the tourism industry, which accounts for about 9% of South Africa's annual revenue. Without rain or another source of water, Cape Town's tops will run dry by the 22nd of April. City authorities are racing to build desalination plants, drill boreholes and tap into aquifers such as Table Mountain. There are alternatives and, and there are countries in this world that have proven that there are ways to deal with, with drought and with desert regions. Uh, one has to, look at just, has to look at the Middle East and see what Israel did to a desert there in respect of desalinization. And uh, India are also doing a lot of good work with desalinization. The hot summer weather is only exacerbating the situation. I think it's a, a problem, an issue in terms of swimming in pools uh, because a lot of people would like to do that. And if they know that they're going to come to South Africa and they're not going to be able to do that, or for example, they're not going to be able to shower without you know, um, inconveniences, it might also have an effect. Despite the crisis, the tide of tourists remains strong. No, it's, I think it's not uh, anything that, which could you stop from coming here. I mean, it's anyway a beautiful country and if you not have a shower for one, two days, it's fine. But if there's no water at all, I don't know. I can't actually imagine it, but yeah, this should never stop you from coming here. Authorities are setting up water collection sites where residents queue to fill their water bottles a maximum of 25 litres per person per day. We can't park anymore, we can't, we must just shower and we can't, every other day we shower to, to save water. Um, but we make do, you know, we make do. I think the water is going to run out and um, I, it's very scary to think of it, but I think it's a reality and we do, we definitely have to do our part and use as less, as, as little water as possible. Um, but I do hope that the government is doing something to prevent day zero because it will be a national crisis. City authorities say dam levels dropped below 30% in the first week of the year with only 20% of that water considered usable. Authorities have urged residents to do their bit to save water and stick to the rations implemented last year. Beryl Oro, CGTN. An almost unfathomable uh, crisis there in Cape Town. Let's bring you more on this now. We're joined live from Johannesburg by Simon Gear, an environmental scientist. Uh, Simon, it's almost unimaginable that Cape Town will be completely dry, uh, p potentially in about 90 days' time. In your view, what went wrong? Yeah, it's a terrifying thought. First major city to really experience this. Uh, this is something that uh, water experts have been warning for 15, 20 years, certainly as long as I've been involved in uh, uh, environmental science. They were always at the limit of how much water they had available. And then we had this massive drought and that pushed them over the edge. And of course, I mean, the big question is now is that is day zero avoidable? What do authorities need to do uh, in order just to create some kind of sustainable supply of water? Right now they're in crisis management, so they are uh, looking at desalinization, they're looking at drilling extra boreholes, uh, they might even be at the stage of having to you know, uh, truck water in from elsewhere, it is that serious. Uh, it, it's easy to look in retrospect and say, well, they should have been planning 10, 15 years ago. Um, but uh, politicians, I think, are notorious for not planning beyond the mm. next electoral cycle often. And we'll get back to the sort of politics of it in just a moment. But of course, many people point to the fact that, you know, the irony is that Cape Town is surrounded by seawater. Just how far are we in, in terms of securing desalination as a, as a process that might be able to, to stem off the worst of this water crisis? Yeah, well, in the past, uh, desalinization wasn't really an option because what you're doing is you're trading electricity for water. And uh, South Africa went through a major electricity crisis three or four years ago, and that meant that desalinization plants weren't going to be an option. Now they've had a look at them. I think there have been a few in the tender process that are due to start coming online um, through the next couple of months between now and that deadline uh, at the end of April. 
uh, whether they're going to be enough to actually head the crisis off, uh, we're still going to have to wait and see. And of course, I can imagine it's very hard to sort of avoid the temptation uh, of uh, finger pointing at this stage. Just how politicized has this issue become over the past few months? I don't think there's been an issue necessarily between uh, Cape Town, which is controlled by uh, the national opposition, and the national government. Uh, there hasn't really been any suggestion that Cape Town has been prejudiced uh, by that. But there is, uh, this has spilt over into the domestic politics of the area, with Cape Town's mayor, Patricia DeLille, coming under severe pressure from her own party, uh, possibly to step down and release control of this, uh, this water project. Uh, she has countered that by saying she's doing a very, very good job. She's working, uh, she's working 14 hours a day on this. And, uh, and is the only, uh, the only leader who seems to be uh, receiving the social media kudos from her people to continue with that. Uh, but there do, do seem to be some reactions uh, within the party, not only involved with the water crisis, there are other issues as well, um, but it's not helping when you get that internal conflict and you've got such a major problem to deal with. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much. Uh, Simon Gear, an environmental scientist there, joining us uh, from Johannesburg, South Africa, on Cape Town's very pressing water crisis.